Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Tuesday here in Melbourne. And of course, uh, let's turn our attention now to VNL. And uh, this, well, tomorrow was meant to be a VNL night, even though uh, for the Blaze it was meant to be their bye weekend. So uh, it didn't really affect them too much. Uh, but of course, we got uh, my four amazing bassers from the Northeast Blaze to uh, tell us a bit about how the season's gone so far up to this point uh, and they joins us right now. Thanks all you for joining us. No problem. Well, I will get to all for you to introduce yourselves and tell us what position or you play on the court. Um, I'll go first. <laughs> um, I'm Meg. Um, I am in the champ team and I play in midcourt, mainly centre and wing attack. Uh, my name's Maddie. Um, I've been playing in Div 1 and I play wing defence, goal defence. I'm Jackie. Um, I'm in the under-9 teams team and I've been playing in defence, mainly goal defence. Um, I'm Ruby. I'm in the under-9 teams team and I play like center goal attack. Uh, let's start off with champ first. Uh, now, of course, last time the champ played was funny enough against the Falcons. Um, of course, the, the Wednesday before lockdown. Um, didn't quite get the win that day, um, but uh, Tell us, how's the season gone so far up to this point for the champ? Yeah, obviously we're quite a new team this year. So, um, you know, we go into every round thinking like we've all we've got to do is just give it our best. And we're showing some really good netball. And I think that's just what's really exciting. We obviously didn't get the win against Falcons, who are a quality team and probably are my pick to win the whole um, championship. But... Um, I think it's just so exciting for us. We've, we're such a young team and, you know, we're building the connections every week and we're lucky enough to have some of the past um, champ players still in the team to be able to work under. So probably not the season that we wanted, but um, it's just exciting and we're all pretty happy to just be back out playing netball. Div 1, I guess I'll direct this to Maddie. Uh, you know, she has played also nine teams as well, um, of course, this year. Uh, how's I know when I saw Div 1 play it was against the Falcons uh, and of course uh, you absolutely put the Falcons to the cleanest um, in in that game. Tell us uh, how is everything going in the Div 1 team so far? Yeah, it's been really good. It's really exciting. Um, not only the scoreline, I guess, but seeing us finally produce four quarters of consistent netball. I think that's what we're really working on um, because obviously the score lines have been um, quite big but for us it's been focusing on being consistent so not letting teams come back in that third and fourth quarter um, and it's also been really great to see everyone getting on court um, and having a great opportunity everybody's been playing um, a great amount of court time and we have so many um, different combinations that can take the court and still produce um, what we want to be producing so yeah it's really exciting. Now, the 19s, uh, Jack and Ruby. Now, one of you can answer this or either you can answer this because uh, last time I saw yourselves play it was a pretty close one, I think, uh, at the top of my head. I think it was pretty close up to about probably... Last quarter. Yeah. Last quarter. Um, yeah, um, I can answer this, Rubes. Um, I guess against Falcons, we did lose in the end, but it was a pretty, um, we're a pretty young team at the moment and we've had a few of our players out. So Cass, obviously with a knee, Abby was sick last week and then Mads has gone up to Div 1. But um, last time we played Falcons, we did actually win. So I think it was, it was quite a close game. We just didn't really convert in the last quarter when we should have, but I think we're all still learning as well. And it was awesome to get um, the young girls out. Like I know um, Liv played in goal shooter, Leash was out, Rubes was moving around heaps. It was awesome to see all the girls moving around and kind of just like going where we need them. Yeah, it was a good game though. Uh, into this, I don't know, really silly group thing at the moment, um, in my opinion, uh, where I think uh, the Blaze uh, has got a pretty tough draw um, out of that. <laughs> You're playing everyone pretty much uh, in the top half of the ladder. Uh, of course, Falcons, uh, Geelong, uh, and obviously uh, they were the top half. Um, and then you've got some really tough ones as well, like the Saints and all those. Um, I guess how you're approaching um, this group thing um, at the moment? Um, I think it's a really tough competition, but it's probably good for us because we do want to be playing that finals netball. So it will be good to have four weeks of really 
um, hard and really great games of netball. So we're going into finals prepared. Um, and I think it's just doing what we did, what we've done all season. So just focusing on our game plan um, and just trying everything that we've been doing at training. So I think we'll be really good playing these teams um, heading into finals. Yeah, and I think for the champ team, especially because I don't know what our likelihood of a top two finish is, but it's just like Maddie was saying, it's just a great opportunity to finish the season strong and being able to test yourself against the best. And that's probably how we want to end the season is where just sort out the benchmark and see what we need to then work on to be up there with them the following year. I was just trying to say, even though the ladders um, are pretty like full on couple of teams they're playing, I think in 19s it's pretty even um, across all the games. Every game's kind of unpredictable. It's just about kind of just doing the basics and playing every team, how we play a blaze. Um, like we played Falcons a couple of weeks ago and won and this week we've lost. So I think it's just kind of a battle to the end. Yeah, and what Jackie said, just like you never know what can happen each game really. To cold players in your respective teams that's had a great season so far and you can't include yourselves. Or in, or in this case, Jack so and Ruby, we in, in this case, so Jack and Ruby, you can't include each other. I guess we've just been so fortunate enough to have nearly a quarter of the under-19 state team in our team. So, um, <laughs> and quality, having Naya in our team, she's such a great asset. And just to be able to learn from her and, vice versa it's been really good to be able to make connections with her and you know when she's on the court she's a real presence so I've loved being able to play with Naya and it's been great to have the Moody sisters they're obviously coming from a different club so learning the Blaze style of play and they're mastering that every game as it comes and I think you know unfortunately Georgia going down with her foot means that Ruby Turner's had more of an opportunity which you know, she's really had to step up and having Ty there help her through it has she's been really improving week in and week out. But overall it's I'm just grateful to be able to play with all of them. They're all such assets to Blaze and our champ team. Yeah, I um agree with Meg. I've really enjoyed playing um Div One. It's just these girls that I'm playing with, they've been playing V and L for so much longer than me. So I just have loved learning off them and just um sort of trying to grab everything I can with playing with them. I think a massive standout in Div 1 is Bron. Um, she's just such a strong presence on court. And if something's not working, she'll tell you straight away. And she'll also tell you how to fix it. So I think it's it's really good having her down the attack end. And then down the down the defense end would be Nikita. Um, she's been really strong this year. Um, she gets balls that I don't know how she gets to, but um, she always is 100%. So I'd definitely say, um, yeah, Bron and Nikita have been great assets to Div 1. I'll do one, Rubes, and you do one. Um, so I'd say in our attack end, Kayla's really stepped up, especially this second half of the season. Um, I think with Cass going down, that was a massive loss to the team. So now Kayla, she's kind of gone into the role of goal shooter, which she's not really used to, but I think she's, like, really helping out Leash um, and Liv, who are, like, kind of new to Blaze, and they're still new to v &L. So she's really settling... Um, the attack end. So I think she's doing great. Like on Falcons on the week, um, last week, sorry, we didn't have her there. She really just settled the team and actually brought us back into the game, which was awesome. Um, yeah, also with our defence and like Ali and Steph are doing really well in goalkeeper. Like when they're facing big shooters, they're still trying to get the rebounds. And like when Ali's, she's only young, so she's still learning and she's doing really well in that position, I think. Yep. Now, now, this question directly goes to Ruby and Jack in the 19s. Now, considering you've actually lost your uh, your 19s captain from this year, uh, originally, because <laughs> oh, that's Maddie, <laughs> now she's Thank got up to do one. So uh, how are you so coping about Maddie at the moment? Um, it's a big loss losing Maddie in the team, even just for uh, like the warm-up and stuff. I feel like she brings a lot to the team. She's still there. If you see us before the game, she'll make her way over and still cheer us on every game. Um, I think everyone's kind of stood up a fair bit since we've lost Maddie and a couple of other players as well. And I feel like we've just kind of all come together. I know me and Steph have had to put on our captain hats. Um, <laughs> I personally normally give Maddie all the pep talks and I kind of just like am on, on the court leader. But now I've had to start thinking about those pep talks before the game, which has been hard, but I've been working on it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely um, bad missing Mads. 
in the centre court, like we miss her drives and she just like controls the ball. But I think Jackie and Steph are doing really well as captains and just like keeping us controlled before the game and um, keeping us hyped, playing a <laughs> fun game, like heads up, which keeps us relaxed. And says <laughs> more. <laughs> Maddie, obviously uh, you were the captain at the start of the year. I think you were captain for about a couple of weeks before you got up to D1. Um, yeah. Are you kicking yourself that you're now not the captain of the team? <laughs> oh, look, I still love to watch the 19s and I just see like plays as like a massive opportunity. Like there's no, I guess, set teams as such or like set positions. So I'm just happy to be playing at Blaze and wherever that sits is wherever. I'm just happy to be learning. Um, but yeah, definitely miss um, playing with the 19s. But yeah, Div 1 has been great as well. So yeah. So Maddie, when it gets to the finals uh, and obviously Div 1 and hopefully the 19s get there, um, mm-hmm. will you be playing 19s or Div 1? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, at this stage, I think I'm playing Div 1, but... Um, th- I think things could change, but I'm not too sure at the moment. I think it's a week by week thing, um, but yeah. Hey, obviously, this is your first year in champ. Obviously, played a couple of years in uh, uh, in Div One, and obviously winning premiership there and uh, making grand finals in 19s. Um, uh, do you miss playing in Div One? I know that was the silliest question because because I know you're probably going to say either or, but uh, <laughs> you can answer that uh, question. Yeah, no, I. I definitely miss playing with the likes of Bron and Sammy who, um, like we touched on before, just know the Blaze game plan inside and out and are always giving you feedback. But then I'm still getting that at training. Like I'm still working with the girls through drills. And, you know, I've then gone into a team where I have Ala Bayless yelling in my ear, which is just (laughs) even better. So I just think I'm so, at Blaze, we are so lucky with the players that we have and we're just learning constantly. And I'm, you know, as much as it was sad to say goodbye to the Div 1 girls, I've been loving it up and learning from the champ girls as well. One thing I love about the Blaze is that you do keep it, uh, especially in a real community um, side of things in regards to, obviously, uh, your coach side of things. Obviously, that's been sustainable for for quite a while now. Obviously, you've got Sarah Hogan who plays and now and obviously coaches as well. Um, I, I think Ali Bayless is doing the same thing as well. Um, I guess how important is that to have players that are still playing but also coaching? Um, I think it's pretty awesome, especially for me as a defender with KB. Um, KB is kind of like that assistant coach role as well and she just gives me the perspective of a coach as well as helping me on court in my defence. I feel like having her there when kind of the team chats are happening like quarter time or half time, I kind of just go to her as like a one-on-one even question and she just helps me heaps because she kind of gets it on court through experience as well. So it's it's awesome. But I love all the coaches, especially like the experience through Kate and Callie and then also just having a player that's also a coach as well. Yeah, and I think it's just a credit to Blaze to be able to give players that opportunity as well to coach if they want to. It's not just about, um, you know, players and coaches are two separate different groups. We, you know, we look after the athlete in many ways, whereas, and wherever they want to go with their netball, you know, some people might, Sarah Hogan, for example, is taking a step back from netball and then she's, you know, finding it in another way through coaching. So I think that's a real credit to Blaze to be able to look after their players and we don't have a big player turnover. So um, yeah, it's just a really good club to be a part of and just, you know, focus on the whole individual, not just the netball side of us all. I know that obviously all three are from different parts of Melbourne or Victoria for the matter of fact. Uh, obviously, <laughs> um, obviously Meg's all the way up out in Bendigo uh, in the gold fields. Uh, obviously, Maddie's out my way in the outer race, and obviously Ruby and Jackie are in um, the northeast region. Um, but you might as well uh, tell us uh, how has that come about, and I guess how special is it to have so many players from different regions in the northeast, northwest, technically, uh, uh, to come together and play as one? How how important is that be? I think it's really special. I mean, the friendships that we've formed at Blaze are like no other, I think. Um, And it's really good to be able to meet 
netballers from basically all over Victoria um, because I did before coming to Blaze, I didn't realise how many people were striving to play netball at a high level, I guess. Like it was sort of just playing in my local competition. It was really, um, I guess, small. And then you go to Blaze and there's just so many different um, netballers who have different um, skills and things like that that I've learned from. So I think it's really special having, yeah, players from all over Victoria. Um, well, it's definitely a hike for me, but it's worth it. I've been doing it for so many years and if I wasn't happy, I wouldn't do it. But I'm just so obsessed with Blaze and just their philosophy and just the girls. I think um, it just makes it so much easier when you get down there and you're with like-minded people and, you know, what we were talking about before, just the friendships you make are just so special and um, it makes it a whole lot easier because the seasons do get draining and it's mm-hmm. the girls that get you through it. I reckon especially during our pre-season as well, kind of seeing everyone three days a week committing. Like, personally for me, the hike isn't that far. But when you're having that off day, but then you see someone like Megan Ruby come in all the way from Bendigo, it's just like you kind of just like put it in perspective. And then that kind of like lifts the whole group because it's like if they're committing, why can't you almost? But, yeah, I think it's just the vibe of Blazers. Like the pre-season's hard, but we all kind of get through it together. And during the season, yeah, it's awesome. Well, you must have- give your local netball association or club a bit of a shout out and have you gone back there to uh to help help them out um prior to the lockdown well we and Ruby are both from um Banyul we're Banyul girls so Banyul Netball Association in McLeod um we've grown up there we've had some girls like Chloe Lambert, Liv Ellis, um Lucy Bolt, Steph Calabrese all we kind of all went through that pathway um yeah that club's an awesome club we've all pauline's always been there as well running it um yeah we love our banyol girls it's around the corner mm-hmm. from where i live and i feel like yeah it's a big part of us and it was awesome coming to blaze and seeing familiar faces that's kind of why i really do like playing at blaze because it does have that link to banyol which has always been a family to all of us in bendigo Rubes turner and i play for sandhurst football netball club and we've been there they're all our juniors and um, they've been a great club to us, supporting us with the travel back and forth from VNL. And, you know, our thing is just we're in the country and we want to inspire more girls to get down to the big smoke and actually take on the VNL because it is it is worth it for all the friendships and the, the quality of netball you get. So go San <laughs> Um, I grew up playing for Lillardale and Yarra Valley Netball Association. So um, I think the pathway is very similar to Banyul. Um, we have a few girls from Blaze that played with me there. So it's like Mia and um, Cleo and Cass and Ella. And I think Sarah Hogan and Ella Bayless um, grew up playing there as well. So it's really, um, I guess it's really cool seeing people coming through that pathway. I know that I used to watch like Sarah and Ella when I was little at the netball courts and I thought that was so good and then seeing us <laughs> play with them at plays um yeah it's really special so yeah so Jack and Ruby considering you're both at the same association or from the same association at Banyol uh you might as well tell us have you ever versed against each other no we've actually. always no we're in the same team Ruby, how, Ruby aren't you two years younger than me technically yeah yeah we well, we're um, in the same club anyway so yeah, I don't think we've ever actually played. I think when I played down for, like, state championships, when I was, like, moved up and I was top age, mm. I went down a few times. I think me and Rubes played together then. Um, and we also played for the same, like, I don't know, what you call, a local club within Banyol. So we played for Rosanna. So we never really played. We always no. were in two different um, age groups. But that was yeah. also, like, Callie and Chloe were all there at Rosanna as well. So we've always been at the same club, never really together to Meg in particular. Now, I know when your team made the grand final, what was it, 2019 or maybe, anyway, it was a couple of years ago. Um, I think there was a huge uh, publicity around your grand final in the VNL uh, because I think you were versing against a couple of your uh, Bendigo teammates uh, in that grand final. Um, how was the hype like uh, up in Bendigo? And uh, <laughs> did you get one back at him uh, after, after you won yeah, the grand final? Down went wild. <laughs> um, no, it's it's really good to just, it was funny that, you know, they're probably the two clubs that have the most Bendigo people and, you know, we find ourselves in a grand final. So go Bendigo. 
but um <laughs> yeah it's it's funny because we do have a very strong rivalry between you know Chelsea Tory and Abby Ryan and the girls who were at Burundara and you know in our local league when we play for Sandhurst um they play for Kangaroo Flight and it's always right. them and us in the grand finals as well so there is a bit of a rivalry that doesn't seem to get away from us wherever we go but it, it's just great to be able to show showcase the talent that is in Bendigo because I think the girls would agree when you go to state titles we're always quite a strong region and you know some girls are a bit scared to take the leap and drive down to Melbourne but definitely the more girls that are getting involved in VNL you can see a lot of girls from Bendigo coming down again that's good. Now, Maddie, you're from up, up my way, uh, of course, out here in the outer east. Uh, of course, uh, win a prem you did win a premiership at uh, Wandon, didn't you? Um, oh, a couple of years ago, yeah, we won yeah, four, four. Yeah, four. Um, no, no, as you mentioned, you just beat me by, by us, uh, <laughs> on this question. Uh, of course, Wandon did win all four of them. Um, in a clean sweep. Um, I guess, tell us a bit about that year. Um, yeah, it was a really exciting year. That was my first year at Wandon, um, and it was sort of my first step into pushing myself in um, getting somewhere in netball, I guess, um, because I played local for my primary school, and then um, I thought that footy league was probably the next step. Um, and then that was the year that Kate and Ella were coaching as well. So having them coach or have, being coached by them for the first time was really exciting. I just, I'd never had coaches that knew so much about netball. I was just, um, I was in shock really about how, um, how much knowledge they had on the game. So it was really exciting learning. So um, yeah, it was a really great year at Wondon and we, yeah, we won four from four. Unfortunately, A grade didn't make the grand final, but we had under 17s and, um, C, oh, D, C and B win and the footy as well. So it was really good. Yeah, we'll, we'll just uh, won't worry about the ace. <laughs> <laughs> In the clean sweep. Uh -huh. Now, uh, I have to ask um, this question um, as well. Now, what, all you mentioned right at the start, what position you all play on the court? If you had a preferred position where you like to play on the court, where would that be? Now, considering I haven't still figure out what position Ruby actually plays after a couple of Oh, no of one rounds. knows what Ruby plays. No <laughs> one knows what Ruby plays. <laughs> She's everywhere. It's where we need her. We kind of just chuck her on the day. <laughs> I've always wanted, I'd love to be a centre quarter if I had the fitness and like aerobic capacity to do it. Um, I love watching Bron, Meg and stuff play in the centre court. I think it's such a cool position and it's like, I don't know. I just love watching him. Probably like defense. I I would like because like I don't know. It just looks whenever they get intercepts, <laughs> it looks so like fun and <laughs> exciting. You get intercepts where you are, Ruby. No matter. What. I know, Ruby. You get it everywhere. <laughs> you don't need to be a defender. You get rebounds and. <laughs> um. I don't know. I, I reckon I really love playing goal defence, um, but I also enjoyed playing centre at the start of the year. That was fun. And, um, like, being everywhere on the court, like, all the time, I found that really fun. Um, but I'd probably say goal defence. Yeah, I guess with my height, I'm pretty happy in the mid-court. <laughs> anywhere else, I'd probably be cleaned up. Um yeah, I don't know. I've when in my juniors I was always goal attack and goal defense, and then not until now I've sort of been into mid court, and I'm happy here. I love it. <laughs> She's staying. Which is who had the most embarrassing moment on the court this season, and what was it? Knowing that your some of your games are live streamed, I wouldn't say actually on the court during the game but Georgia Moody does the worst pre-game farts I'm yeah, telling you yes. they stink so much <laughs> we asked what do you eat before a game she said prawns who eats prawns before a game of netball oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> she did say this to her yes <laughs> yo it was she did one before Falcons the other night and we were like what was that it was <laughs> pretty bad but it's so bad <laughs> 
still hate me for that too. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, someone, someone did mention that to me, yes. <laughs> Pretty well known now. <laughs> I think. Same, I thought. Oh, I guess the, it was a few rounds ago. Um, it's not really funny, like it's actually more serious, but Mia <laughs> like she had, she had trouble seeing, like she was really sick. And she's on the court oh, and she's funny. like, Ron, I can't see. And she's like, She's saying to Bron that she can still play, but she can't see anything. Like her vision was completely gone, but she's on court and she's like this. She's running around like this. And Bron's like, Mia, get off. And she's like, I'll be fine. And I'm like, Mia, you can't see. Get off the court. Just like, that just shows how much Mia loves to play. Like she didn't want to come off, yeah. even though she didn't see. <laughs> um, in 19, I'm trying to think of something like I feel like there's been a few moments earlier in the year. Uh, I'm pretty clumsy myself. I can't really think of anything with me. I But I remember once I was defending with Ali and like, you know, when you hold um, <laughs> like the, when her hands are up, it was like the preseason game where we were wearing shorts and I've like grabbed her so she didn't like fall into it. And I've completely like ripped her shorts on court. <laughs> and, like that was probably funny. <laughs> yeah. God. Like, who else? I think it's more things that happen at training. Yeah. Like, yeah. And we're like, All what was that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll change that tw question to any embarrassing moments at training. Now, I've been to a couple of your training sessions and I any <laughs> embarrassing moments at training. I feel like Jackie's fallen over like all the time at training. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the last training? She like fell over the bench or something. Yeah. She like ran too far. Did you really? <laughs> oh, what about the other week, Meg, when you fell off the bench? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, well, who were we playing? Was it Ariel? We were playing um, Ariel's at their stadium and I was on the bench and the goalkeeper's just flown out for an intercept and I was thinking, oh, yeah, she's pulling up she's pulling up as she gets towards me next minute I go backwards over the bench and she's <laughs> with me. I went back and watched it on the live stream that was really very <laughs> thanks for that man <laughs> right is is that the reason you why your back's hurting her Meg oh probably yeah probably is that under my um, DNA cover is that can I claim that anything <laughs> <laughs> happens claim it on that <laughs> yeah I've got evidence. <laughs> yes, because that was a live stream game too. So uh, there's definitely. <laughs> uh, now, who's the comedian, the best singer, the best dancer on the team? I've got a feeling the Moody Sisters going to be in this one somehow. No, well, funny. I feel like I have to say Ala Baylor, so she'll probably come at me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I yeah. forgot about that one. Yeah. yeah. That's my safe bet. <laughs> but the Moody's do, yeah. Alex, especially, she's got a booty. She likes to twerk. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon Liv Alice would be up there as well. Yes. Oh, you say Liv Alice. You can't not. <laughs> Probably Jackie's the comedian. She always has weird stories. <laughs> she slept in the sauna. <laughs> 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 now it's coming out. This is what Ruby's here for, just to throw Jackie under the bus. <laughs> I don't know, I am to repeat some. Like... <laughs> wow. Uh, now, now, I've got to feel this is more towards the 19s than the other two, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is anyone into their TikToks? Olivia Alice. <laughs> Say, I feel like it's directed at Liv Alice. She's a TikTok Liv Alice. Definitely. Liv Alice, 100%. I think we all try. I love that with Liv Alice and her TikTok account. Go follow, guys. I should have known that Liv Alice is going to be that one. Um, <laughs> um, now, do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? I used to have them, but now I think I don't anymore because if 
I got so OCD about them and if they didn't go and happen at the same time, it affected my game. So now I've just wiped away all of them and it's just... Um, I don't what did you anymore. used to I used to be really strict on like, um, just like everything was done at a particular time. And if it was like oh. within five minutes over or under, it just threw my whole head space yeah. like out the window. So I just... That's yeah and just like even things like how I'd tie my shoelaces do my hair I was yeah had to calm down (laughs) I'm just basic need to go to the bathroom make sure I go to the bathroom as soon as I get there before I it's literally just that just go to the bathroom and that's me I don't really have that much I used to when I was younger just like dumb stuff but then like as I like when I used to goal I used to have to get a goal in before I like started playing (laughs) now I've kind of grown out of it the same as Meg I used to have them but I feel like I just play now because it just throws me out a little bit but I know that Mia um she has like she has these um netball runners that she wears every game and she really needs new shoes but she's not gonna get some until next season because she's scared that we'll lose because we haven't lost yet fingers crossed we won't but she's like we'll lose if I get new shoes so I'm like okay Mia but she's slipping and sliding all over the court but it doesn't matter. the super can be so dangerous like you can literally Hello. just like like you can lose yourself in them so much mm. no but <laughs> maybe like as a team we we like we don't touch the line when we oh yeah all the game or like yeah so really of like she can't she has to always have the same colored cones when she does drills and stuff it's pretty mm. funny pink tape her ankles yeah. Mm. I'd hate to be in a classroom. It'd be everything perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, sorry, I have to ask the 90s this question. Now, you just mentioned it, Ruby, just a moment ago about what you do pre-game. Now, I did notice it uh, at the Falcons game. Uh, well, it seems to be a long time ago now, but it's only about a week and a half ago. Um, but... Uh, what was the huddle thing that you do? And uh, who's actually managed to win all those ones? I know Jesse got the, close. Game. Is that the down one? Yeah. I don't know who taught us this. I feel like Ella or Sarah taught us this game. I don't know. Someone yeah. introduced it. Yeah, I feel like it was a while ago. And then um, we just started playing it because it just gets the laughs up. So, like, I don't know, for the game, we kind of feel a bit off or we're not, like, vibing or communicating well. We just do that and it kind of gets everyone going. If it's mid warm up or after warm up, just before we play. How special is it to be a Smash FM ambassador? I love it. I think um, just even knowing and getting to know other people that are in different sports so that are a part of the Smash FM family. Like, I love knowing what Will goes out and the, the sport he goes and sees. And I think he just creates a really good awareness for um, just for Melbourne local sport, which, you know, sometimes it can be brushed aside so yeah I'm very thankful to be a part of this family yeah I agree with Meg it's really special to be a part of this because we always know that um Smash FM is supporting us um and doing everything that they can for us while we're playing sport like we always feel supported while we're playing and I think having that from Blaze as well and Smash FM it makes a really great environment at netball so it really makes you want to push yourself and um, produce really great netball for Smash FM, I guess. I think also since um, I started this, well, it was Abby and Maddie to start with, but I feel like how we've brought in like Megan Ruby now, it's kind of awesome just to have like the mix of girls because me and Maddie would always do it, but we were originally just from 19. So it was kind of like, we felt like we really couldn't touch on Div 1 or Opens as much as like Champ, sorry, as much as we could have. But I feel like now, because we're all spread out, we can just like have a bit more perspective from all the teams. Yeah, I think it's really special. Like being this my first year, I wasn't expecting any of this. So like very different and kind of gets me out of my comfort zone and everything. All, all for you. Thank you so much for getting up your time to join us. Uh, also, we hope we'll see uh, all for you back on the netball court after this lockdown, hopefully in another week time. Uh, and uh, let's hope that you can uh, kickstart uh, hopefully that momentum that you've had before the lockdown, and hopefully we'll get to see uh, all three teams in the finals in another, 
Uh, who, who knows when that will be? But uh, <laughs> whenever that will be, hopefully a little bit later on down, a little bit later down the track. Well, Thanks, Rob. Thank um, you. No worries. And of course, uh, if you want to uh, uh, come and watch the Northeast uh, Blaze in action, of course, once we're out of the lockdown, we'll put all the details up uh, once uh, we'll be able to get to see the Blaze in action in 2021. There's more on the Smashboard show right after this. Don't go away. <laughs>